Hey, from Collider Studios, deep within our own red keep, we are <laughs> Thrones Talk. I'm Ken Knapsack. You joined us last week to take a look back at season six and where we were, what characters are still alive, who went away, and what was the big plots last year. They're carrying over into this season. Well, this week on Thrones Talk, me and my small council <laughs> are going to be looking directly at season seven and just doing some old fashioned, fashioned guessing, <laughs> speculating, <laughs> and trying to figure out what's going on with me, as always, as they will be through this season of Game of Thrones. Dennis Zen, the keeper of the Funko Pops. Yes, I, I'm back <laughs> because after last week's episode, I just kept talking about Game of Thrones randomly. Yeah. You know, so now I'm actually having a purpose of talking about it. You haven't left this set. Right. <laughs> Movie talk yeah, was yeah. done over you. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, I, and I was talking about Game of Thrones the whole time. Yeah. Hey, look, this yeah. is a movie talk. Fire and blood shirt on. Yeah. Dennis, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a challenge out to you now. This season, can we get a new shirt every week? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and do that. <laughs> I, it seems like it's, it's going to be on that, that, that uh, online shopping list. Little, it's a little yeah. off-camera talk there, bleeding on the camera, challenging each other to T-shirts. John Roca, you got a nice shirt on. Thank you. You're back. Uh-huh. I'm back. Let's do this thing. Let's talk about what we think is going to happen. These are my favorite exciting... Uh, this is my most favorite things to do is to yeah. talk about what we think is going to happen in a movie or a TV show yep. or, or, uh, or, or any form of media because I think it's fun to kind of explore and see what's possible and especially because we are off the books. So <laughs> it's all in play. We are far off the map yeah. and with me is someone who's very familiar with those maps. That is Rachel Cushing who did such a great job last week helping us break down season six. Thank you. you were here with us throughout season seven. I know there might be a week you might have to miss. We'll have a pinch hitter, but you are going to be here anchoring uh, a lot of our knowledge this season. That's my job. I'm here and happy to do it, and I'm so excited to speculate. Speculating is just fun. Speculating <laughs> is fun, and I think in a weird way, Game of Thrones may be one of the properties in A Song of Ice and Fire that really started this deep dive, what's your theories, what's your speculation. From 1996 on, there was a small group of people, which is why uh, book readers, and I'll, and I'll admit, I am a late-to-the-party book reader. I started right around the show. Uh, I, I had been familiar with it, but it was like, what's going on? Now I'm in, and now it's, uh, I mean, I'm not kidding. John. Yeah. This is why I spend a lot of time alone. I just pull the maps out and I just start reading. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful world to be lost in, right? Good. It's amazing, very layered, complex world. A lot of political machinations going on. Yeah. People switching sides all the time. Uh, gender issues. It's all kinds of stuff happening here in this world of Game of Thrones. And so I, I, I don't fault you. And, and going back to 96, the small group of book readers had this property, Rachel, and suddenly now the world has all their eyes on it and they have their own theories and speculations. Uh, that's probably why they get a little grumpy. You've all finally caught up, you know, <laughs> like, come on, this, we've known this for a while, so thank you for joining the party, and uh, yeah, let's move forward. Let's, yeah. let's dive on in. <laughs> Season 7 of Game of Thrones, we've seen a couple little trailers, a couple little promos. Dennis, we watched Ice Melt for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but Man, you and Josh watched Ice Melt. <laughs> Luckily, I got to skip to the, the very That's end. true. Me and Makuga did sit there staring at that ice. Uh, we know this about Season 7. It's going to be seven episodes long. The shortest season to date, that is at one, on one hand disappointing, but at one hand you hear the producers say, we wanted a 70 hour movie, and we know we're gonna get even more than that right now, uh, up to about maybe 73 hours. Uh, guys, let's start with seven episodes. Rachel, does that affect this at all for you? I mean, uh, on a macro level, yeah, I'm disappointed. I want as many sure. minutes, as many hours as of this as I can get, but you know, you have to understand that this is bigger than any movie production ever. Like the, the logistics and the the rounding up all the people that are needed to make this show as amazing as it is, it, it, it's tough for them. And this year they had to shoot winter. I mean, winter's yeah. here, guys. They keep mm -hmm. telling us that. And so it need, they needed to push shooting in order to um, to encompass that. And, you know, the special effects, I'm sure, just take months to figure out and create. So I, I will take what I can get is the bottom line. Yeah. And uh, and the fact that it's it's not just going to be 60 minute episodes that they've come out and said they're going to be longer than that is again more minutes great yeah absolutely and we're titling this episode winter is here dennis because it is here and it, you're a production guy yeah. you know this you know what it takes just to shoot awesome tactical mm -hmm. sketches can you imagine doing 10 of these episodes a year yeah and also i, I mentioned this before this season as we've seen from the trailers is much more action-packed yeah. and anyone in production knows shooting those action sequences take much longer mm. than yeah. something than, than a lot of the Game of Thrones stuff, which is usually two or three characters in a room talking to each other. Right. Those things you can shoot fairly quickly once you start getting to action. And so even though it's 
only seven episodes. You're talking about much more intensive shooting. That's why this season was delayed and they had to push it back and where they're talking about maybe next season not even happening in 2018 then yeah. we have to wait yeah well we'll still be talking game of Thrones, oh yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll still have a whole season <laughs> yeah. uh, of uh reaction review episodes even if they're no no episodes up well john we'll reenact some fights yeah absolutely <laughs> seven let's episodes do let's do it seven episodes scare you at all no or? it makes me happy actually I, we've seen enough of game of Thrones. like we've got five six seasons now and we've seen a lot and there have been complaints about every season about some boring storylines about sure, the stories yeah. that didn't mm -hmm. work so Less Dorn, the better. Less, uh, less with the me, uh, the Arya storyline at times, the better. So they're, they've shown themselves to not always knock it out of the park with every storyline. So if you, you are forced with a seven-episode series to really focus on the meat of the product and what you want to get out there, what you want to get told. And so to me, I think it motivates the creators to create seven really powerful uh, and fantastic episodes. So I'm excited about it. I, I agree with you all. <laughs> points, John, especially you, just what this means. Uh, yeah. Rachel, Dan, and Dave have already come out and say that the pacing of this of season is yeah. going to be so fast. The wars are going to really set the tone. They're not going to be just little things that we lead up to. They're setting the pace for this season. Yeah, and it just makes sense. All the pieces are coming together. I mean, I, we're not going to be in Essos at right. all this season, yeah. right? Like, it's all in West. Right. I mean, we'll be on the yeah. ocean seas, Theory, but yeah. like, you know, everybody's coming together to fight over the Iron Throne, but really it's still just we, set up for the uh, main battle. And we don't know that. We could do a quick cu sh cut over to Essos where, uh, you know, Illyrio's just sitting there having some cheese. Oh. <laughs> just cut. He's just like, oh, hey, hi. How are you doing? All right, guys, let's dive in. Uh, this season is going to be about the War of the Queens. We've got Cersei. We've got Danny finally hitting the shores. Mm. It's going to be about the war for Westeros and possibly the war for something more in the trailers. You've got Davos in the first one talking about it doesn't matter, like The Rock. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's sitting on that Iron Throne. If we don't band together, when the when the enemy comes down from the north, you're going to be a bunch of bones sitting on that throne. Then we got Jon Snow in this trailer, the second trailer, talking about old family alliances mm -hmm. and maybe putting aside our differences. Who is he talking about? So let's start there. Danny has landed in Westeros, but I want to know, Danny, Jon, teaming up, Rachel. I mean, it has to be. If, if you're a book reader or you even know even a little bit beyond this show, you know that the Targaryens and the Starks have a long history. And, you know, throughout the civil wars and the different things that happened, they teamed up. They, they were very different and they had their issues, but they teamed up when they needed to. And I think John is telling Danny, look, our families have united when the realm was in peril and we have never been in peril like we are right now. And I think he's, the part of the season is going to be him convincing her of that because she's focused on the Iron Throne. She's focused on it. I was born to rule. I am finally back in Westeros. When she puts her hand down on the soil yeah, yeah. and Dragonstone, that's powerful. It's and big mom. It's, it's, it's so important to her, but we know there's still something bigger out yeah. there, and john has got to convince her of that. Right. I mean, I wear my Night's Watch shirt because this is, when people ask, what house would you join? I always say I would join the Night's Watch. Uh, number one, John, I'm not that great with women. Oh. Number two, <laughs> Uh, so I can take that oath. That's Number fair. two, I like the idea of fighting the real enemy sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I don't like get uh, bogged down in the matters of the of the throne and the crown. There's uh, bigger problems at hand sometimes, mm -hmm. and I, I can identify with that, John. Do you think the rest of the realm will when John and Davos and all those people start saying, hey, ice zombies... Heading down. Right, right. Well, I, I don't know how much the ice zombies are going to play in. The walkers, don't, don't, don't go. Oh, the weights, whatever you want to say. The, the whites are like, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know how much they're actually going to come after us, so to speak, uh, or how much we're going to see them in the in the season. Yeah. So for me, I'd be surprised if we see a lot of them. I think this is more about who's going to be in charge, who's going to be in power, who's going to be the leader. And I think with with uh, with uh, Danny and John, this is what we've been all been waiting for. But it's not going to go the way we think it's going to go. I, you, if Game of Thrones is, it taught me anything, it's don't, don't believe anything that looks like it might work out because it just might not. And I think someone's going to turn, someone's going to oh. twist them. With, 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 when you have Littlefinger and Varys around the situation, mm -hmm. anything can happen. It's funny, I, I agree with you. Game of Thrones has taught us one thing. Do not have a show trying to predict what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> because it won't happen. But some things do happen. We knew Jon Snow was going to come back to life. We knew Melisandre probably was going to do, and that played out pretty well in season six, John. Uh, Dennis, you're John, mm -hmm. thinking of Jon Snow. Dennis, uh, even, so even some things we might think happen here are still going to be pretty spectacular. Yeah, and also remember, we don't know if Jon Snow is going to know his background and history, but he mm -hmm. is related to Daenerys Targaryen. I think yeah. it's... Nephew, I think. Uh, she, she, yeah. yeah, she would Nephew. be his, his aunt. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that comes out. Maybe that helps the link up. But uh, yeah, 
with, with what's going on with the White Walkers and with, with the Whites coming down, you know, I, I, it's, I don't want to go too political, but like mm -hmm. there's things in, in our real world that are very important yeah. that people seem to ignore yeah. because yeah. they're focused on other things. And so we, when if this is a world that has no media, there's no, yeah. you know, they're not reading the internet <laughs> and their cell phones. So to them, this thing is not, a, not an issue whatsoever. Yeah. So they're just going to focus on the Iron Throne. I think my biggest concern is you have Daenerys, she's coming. I think Tyrion is going to play a huge part in her because mm -hmm. she's never been in Westeros. She doesn't know anything about the houses. She knows nothing about the geography. She doesn't know about any of the political stuff going on there. So he's going to be a huge help. Yeah. But she did lose two valuable ad uh, advisors. She, yeah. Jorah Mormont's now gone off to try right. and find a cure. And then uh, Sir uh, Barristan uh, Selmay. Yeah. He died last yeah. season. <laughs> yeah. So there's two crucial members of her team. It would have been better if it was fleshed out with Tyrion and the both of them, but now it's just Tyrion there yeah. to advise her. And it, I think it's going to be a rough road, even though she probably has the numbers, she has the dragons, she has, you know, probably the money. She's going to learn a lot of lessons yeah. about uh, what she doesn't know. Because yeah. the one thing about Danny is, even though I think she is a good leader, there's a lot of things she doesn't know, but she kind of preemptively goes ahead and goes uh, and does that. She strikes me as a great leader who sometimes is a bad boss and there's sometimes mm -hmm. that's the same thing, sometimes it's very different. Uh, John, I love your idea. I, I think the big stuff with the Whites and the White Walkers mm -hmm. will be in season eight. Yes. Uh, I think this season ends with maybe the wall coming down. I, I've been predicting the wall coming down for a while, so I'm, I'm going to be right one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's just because a lot of it will be, as Dennis is saying, the war for what the, the, the throne and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So let's move on in. I think John is talking to Danny. That's my prediction. Yeah. But Danny has landed on the shore. She's back at Dragonstone. That is a big moment for Targaryen history. Wow. But let's start, John, with you. What do you think Danny's immediate goals are going to be when she hits the ground? Well, I think she's got to reconnect here in Dragonstone, right? And there we see Melisandre in the in the trailer. Right. It looks like she's at Dragonstone. What does that mean? Is she finding another new leader to supposedly, you know, push up and, and support? <laughs> you know, so how is that going to affect Danny? Uh, but I also think what's important here, you have to understand, this. Like Dennis said, there's no media. So Cersei can absolutely twist this situation to the crazy dragon lady who is coming yeah. with her fire-breathing yeah. dragons to go, like, take hey, all you, your food, to take all your food, yeah, take everything, yeah. you know, kill all of you. She sets everybody on fire. So this is the whole thing. So Danny, to me, I think in by going to Dragons, she has to really come up with a plan. They have to think ahead. They have to do a whole military strategy of what they're going to do and the political strategy, not mm -hmm. just attack and take over. Yeah. Everybody can, every, you can have all kinds of revolutions. It's what happens after the revolution that really matters. Whether your revolution was worth it or not. And so I think that's what's uh, what's really going to be paramount here is Danny mobilizing her forces and using them correctly and intelligently and being open to hearing other people's points of views because the one thing we know about Danny sometimes she can be too stubborn <laughs> which leads her into trouble. Just a little bit. Rachel, you're agreeing with John. There's a lot of people were saying at the end of last season, you know, this is a one-sided thing. Like right. Cersei doesn't stand a chance right. against this coalition <laughs> of Tyrells, Martells, Greyjoys, Dothraki, Unsullied. I mean, Cersei's and the, dragons and, yeah, and the dragons. <laughs> yeah. So, like everybody was like, "This is no way." Even if, as some people are saying, maybe you're on, you know, yeah. joins up with Cersei, it's still an uneven match. But as John just said, Danny's not going to know exactly how to handle all the dynamics. I think I said last week the Dothraki and Westeros. They have a certain way of doing things, mm -hmm. you know, sacking, raping, pillaging mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And, like, I just don't see that going over well with the subjects in Westeros. I think people yeah. might look at her as something of a tyrant or we don't want to be rescued by you. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be ruled by you. So I think her problems are going to come in how to divert her forces. I mean, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have been talking about the trailers and it kind of looks like maybe the Unsullied go after Casterly Rock. Yeah, That's yeah. a strategic move. I would be really curious to see why they come up with that move, how they do it, and all of that kind of stuff. But what does that gain her? Like mm -hmm. like you said, what are the, the motivations for her? But I see a lot of roadblocks, you know, mm -hmm. being thrown up early when they land and, and, and the, the people of Westeros are like, really? We just went through the War of the Five Kings. Yeah. Like the countryside's 
shot to hell. Like, yeah. and now we got to deal with all of this. But so. Jorah, Jorah says, you know, the, the the common folk don't really care about your no. game. Mm -hmm. no. no, they really don't. And and, and Rachel brought up some point that Danny learned, John. You know, yeah. in, in Marine, occupying doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean everyone's going to be welcoming you with exactly. open arms. Dennis, she's got this all-star team. Yeah. She's got a lot of people, and those dragons. Can she be upset, and how do you think, if so, she could be upset? Uh, I mean, also, you have to remember, I'll bring it back to the real world again. Do the, it. The, the Targaryen name is, is, is a brand name that's tarnished. Right. The last yeah, the mad Targaryen <laughs> that ruled, that everyone hated him. Yeah. So, And they thought he was crazy. So if she's coming back, they don't know that she's who she is. They right. think, oh, a Targaryen's coming. It's going to be crazy. And so maybe the people themselves will band together. And, right. and, and maybe what you're saying with Cersei, maybe she can you know, uh, promote right. some propaganda about like, oh, this conqueror has come to yeah. take all your food, exactly. all your land, yeah. all your money, you know, put you in prison and all this stuff. And if she can get some of the, the common folk and maybe some right. of the other houses that aren't particularly, you know, uh, have good feelings about the Targaryens, maybe she can get more people on her side. Right, because in the trailer, and I want to jump to this, this is a great point, Dennis, um, we got Euron Greyjoy. We know there's going to be a big battle. We see Theon and Yar maybe facing off against their uncle. Finally, track those a thousand ships got built really fast, really fast. Really fast. <laughs> on an island with no real trees. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's that shot that it looks like a Greyjoy army is entering what could be King's Landing. We got the the, the common folk down there enjoying bowls of brown, and they're cheering. Yeah. Are they cheering Euron because he saved the day by stopping Danny from taking over King's Landing, Rachel? It seems like a really strong possibility. I mean, again, the small folk are, are the thing that are important to them is, do I have food? Do I have shelter? Like, who is in the Red Keep? And, you know, all of that stuff is not as important to them. So if they're being attacked by dragons and Euron comes in and manages to, like, you know, shoo them off. Horn or not. The, the, uh, 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 um, then it's oh. going to be, you know, I could see a hero's welcome for them. They don't know what they're getting themselves into, but right, at right. the moment, that it would be good for them, absolutely. Because Yaron himself, the actor, is saying, I'm going to be the biggest baddie oh, you've ever seen. Oh, he could wreak havoc. John, you are expert here on yeah. revenge, vengeance, <laughs> yeah. and heels. Yes. Yaron Greyjoy. Uh, this is a good one, because he's a subtle one. Like, he's not overt like Ramsey. He's not, he's just, this is going to happen. And, and he does it with confidence, and that's the danger. A yeah. heel that believes in himself and believes that he can do what he has to do uh, is more dangerous than a heel who's just all over the place and just angry. And so what we saw last season with what happened in the King's, King's Moot, what, mm -hmm. he, what he did, like completely undercutting, completely cutting the legs out uh, from yep. Yara. And Yara had been there the whole time, leading, mm -hmm. had been showing her ability so much so that half of the place was already ready to go with her. She just had to convince a, a quarter of the other, and they couldn't go because, why? Because Euron found a way to use his, not only his uh, ability to speak, but also the fact that he's a man. He used all the, and then he wowed, you know, whipped them all up into a frenzy when they had taken off well, with the ships. He, he, so, he made a plan. Exactly. You know, that's the plan. thing is with, with politicians, yeah. what do they do? They, it doesn't matter if the plan can be made yeah. or met, they just, as long as they, uh, they provide a vision and yeah. somewhere yeah. for them to go, that's what he provided for them. And, and then, yeah. you know, so, you know, another thing too, when you talk about being able to upset them, remember, uh, the Greyjoys are, Expert, experts, and we're talking Yoren has most of the Greyjoys. Yara, yeah. and, and they only took, what, right. 10 of the ships, 30 of the ships or whatever? Yeah. They're experts at sea battle. So yeah. if Daenerys, even though she has this big army and all these ships, they don't necessarily know how to sea battle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so maybe that's where how they get ta uh, pushed Uns back. Unsullied and Dothraki, not the best, no, uh, not not the best no. sea no. captains out no. there. So uh, do, uh, I asked Dennis directly, I want to ask you two guys, can Danny be upset? Uh, and I, I don't mean she's going to be completely de defeated and mm -hmm. out of the season, but this this arriving to take over, can she be upset? And, and how do you see it happening? Rachel? Absolutely. I, I, her, she, her path can't be that easy. Like, the, she's right. got to suffer a defeat. Uh, a lot of people are wondering if she'll lose a dragon this season because we know mm -hmm. in the histories that it is possible to kill them. Yeah. So there, I, I, there has to be a major setback. And mm -hmm. I think it could be at the hands of Euron. And what John was just saying, Euron has the potential to be the best villain of the series mm -hmm. because he's got the fanaticism of somebody like a Melisandre. He's got the intellect and the cunning of somebody like a Tywin or a Roose, mm -hmm. but he's also as ruthless as Ramsay or Joffrey. Yeah, he's right. got all the aspects, and if they play it right in the series, 
I think that he could be formidable on the political mm -hmm. kind of side of things, but also on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense that he would be her biggest threat. He's worldly too. Euron's been mm -hmm. around yes. the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, he, he what eye patch or not, he's been around <laughs> the world. He, he's probably been north of the wall and down to the Summer Isles, and he could probably uh, communicate well with a lot of different people and know them well. John, predictions on Danny, maybe. <laughs> Running into some trouble. Yeah, definitely running into some trouble. I, you know, everyone has their interests. All mm -hmm. these different houses have their interests, have their separate interests. Do you see this now in our country, in the Congress? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what are you going to get me for me to vote for this bill? Like, that's that's basically what it is. You want me to stay with you? I get it. What's our ultimate goal? Okay, once we get there and achieve that, what do I get? Yeah. Right? What, how, what, how do I get? How do I get a piece of the pie? So all of that is certainly possible. And people may, if she starts to show weakness, mm -hmm. or they see weakness, it may it create a vacuum of leadership. Mm -hmm. It may create a moment where there's people turning on each other. Mm -hmm. So all of that is certainly possible. And Euron would seem to be like you just said, Ray. Rachel, a master, a cunning master at probably doing something like this and, and sowing those seeds of doubt. Uh, and also, the thing that's interesting about Danny is if, if she's going to be able to, when the moment comes, take the moment and kill what she, who she needs to kill yeah. and, and mm -hmm. make the strong choice when she needs to make the strong choice and not make the strong choice when she needs to, because that's, that's a true leader. So we'll see. Good stuff. Thought here. Going back to season two. Uh, Piat Pri in the House of the Undying. Mm. Danny goes to get her dragons back, get some visions. Winter has, has arrived at King's Landing. King's Landing looks blown out, burned, and charred. She goes north of the wall, meets Khal Drogo. Is she alive? Is she dead? Could you see? George R. R. Martin talks about a bittersweet ending for Game of Thrones, whether it's season seven or season eight. Could you see, John, I'll start with you, Daenerys Targaryen dying? Ooh. No. <sighs> That's a good it's a question. Hard one, yeah, it's huh? a hard. Do I see Danny dying? No. I could see Jon Snow dying. Mm. I could see Tyrion Lannister dying. Yeah. And I could definitely see one of the dragons dying. Because yeah. remember, the legend is they those two ride the dragons. They didn't say yeah. three people riding the dragons necessarily. Well, there's, so, there's the third dragon well, rider we don't know yet. We don't know yet. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So it could be any number of people. So right. so who, certainly possible. You know. Gotcha. So but yeah, I don't think Danny, but certainly Tyrion and certainly Jon Snow is possible. Mm, Dennis? I, I think we're definitely going to get a bittersweet ending. I'm not sure about this season, but the sure. series in general will yeah. end on some. It, this is George R. R. Martin. This is Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's not going to have, you know, it's yeah. not going to be rainbows and puppy dogs and yeah. unicorns or whatever. <laughs> Damn it. it. Yeah. So there's definitely going to be some sadness at the yeah. very end, and that may well be the death of a, of a, a beloved character, whether it's yeah. Daenerys. I mean, I consider those three the, the, the top characters. Yeah. You got Daenerys. Tyrion and Jon Snow. Yeah, I agree. Um, so one of those characters may pass on. Maybe maybe Tyrion is in his vineyards and he, he passes mm. away or something like that. And mm. all things are are settled for now, but there's something looming or dark coming along the way. Well, there could be a Cyrano de Bergerac ending. Yeah. Where <laughs> she finally realizes her love for Jorah and Jorah dies. <laughs> you trying to hurt me? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's really impossible. <laughs> Bittersweet ending. Oh. Rachel, there could be no more bittersweet ending than Danny being reunited with Cal Drogo in the Netherlands because they're dead. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I'm going full on, Martin. I don't think any of the main characters make it all the way through. Wow. I, I mean, I'm, I would bet money in Vegas that John dies yeah. by the mm -hmm. end. Um, and I do see uh, Danny possibly dying too. What I foresee, and this might be more book based than show based, I think the show might soften it a little bit, but I see the cataclysm of this fire versus ice when the dust settles there will be no more dragons there will be mm -hmm. no more magic there will be it'll be resetting the world i've always kind of said i, I talk about it when i talk about baelish i think mm -hmm. there's a chance baelish somebody like that baelish ends mm -hmm. up on the throne because mm -hmm. in a weird way he deserved Scary. it because how he did it but mm -hmm. by the time he gets there it doesn't matter because the world's been paved over because yeah. we finally almost like in lord of the rings you go to the next the next the, the earth. New, a new age a new begins. Age. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, yeah, Ver, Varys foreshadows that. You yeah. Know? yeah. If it actually happens, he says, like, he, he'd be willing to, to, to take the Iron Throne even if the world was all ash. Right. Right. Absolutely. Oh, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> point for Dennis. Put it down. Point for Dennis. Good stuff. <laughs> Guys, let's talk about the Stark family reunion. Looks like we're going to get a little... Uh, <laughs> little reunion under the, uh, the heart tree there in the God's Wood. We got John, the King of the North. Sansa's got Baelish whispering her with her in her ear. We see in the trailer, Mira and Bran make it to the wall. And we, uh, we know Arya is the Batman of Westeros running around. She might reunite with the Hound. Wh whether or not she reunites with Stark family proper, we don't know. Uh, let's talk about this family reunion and where these characters are going to drive the story this season and how. 
I mean, it just, it, we've been wanting this for so long. They've all gone on the separate journeys, learned the things they need to learn, as we talked about last week, and now they have to come together to share the knowledge that they've gained and do something about the big threat that's coming. Yep. I think that they're going to be fairly separate from the Iron Throne stuff. I think that when they come together, Bran's got a whole three ad raven download to share yeah, about right. what's going on. Right. And I think that... <laughs> hey, John, come here. Got to tell you yeah, something. <laughs> sit down for this. There's a few things we've got to talk about. Um, and then the trailer shots show John going north of the wall yeah. with Beric Dondarrion. It looks like the Hound with uh, Tormund. Tormund. Mm -hmm. So I think he's left, you know, Sansa ruling things back mm -hmm. at Winterfell. I think, I hope very much that Arya will be by her side. I think that the shots have been very ambiguous with Arya with in the Arya, trailer, yeah. but she does look bundled up. Yeah. And, you know, so I do hope that that means she's heading north. So yeah. I think that they're going to be strong as a unit, as a wolf pack, and that, you know, they can you know, really affect change together. Yeah, and, and Sansa in the trailers is repeating the words that Ned says to uh, mm -hmm. Arya about, you know, when the cold winds rise, the lone wolf yep. dies, the, mm -hmm. the pack survives. And, you know, Arya does have a have an interesting dagger that's not quite needle uh, in some of those promo shots. We could mm -hmm. see where that ends up there. Um, uh, John, where does Baelish and Sansa's relationship factor into the story this season? Yeah, this is, I, I, to me, this is... <laughs> Rachel's got <laughs> shipped. <laughs> This is what I think. In uh, uh, Sansa is a quick learner now, and she's—I think she's about to consume Baelish to his bones and then mm. get rid of him when the time comes. And who knows if if he will let his obsession, uh, love, fanat whatever you call what he feels for her, overtake him to to make him make a wrong decision to put him in a position for her to kill him or get rid of him. Right. But I think she's going to essentially take all his information and knowledge and put it into motion for herself. This is what, there's a possibility Sansa could end up on the Iron Throne at the end as a master manipulator, as a very smart woman, and it would be perfect for the show to show this pampered, spoiled, rich girl become this amazing, powerful, uh, fleshed out woman with scars on her emotionally that make her a powerful leader. And so that's certainly possible. I think, I think, I think that's what I kind of closet, of uh, the back of my mind, believe. But I gotta see Arya and Sansa come back together. I do think, John, the lone wolf thing that people talk about cool. is starting to become a theory with the 12. That's certainly possible. Some of that shots in the second trailer certainly indicate that, that God's eye view of those 12 standing around. Like, Israel, like, oh, crap. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that I think we're, we're going to see with the Starks. And, uh, and I agree with you, Rachel. I don't think we're going to cross over much into the Iron Throne situation yet. Dennis, this has kind of always been like a... A Stark story, a, yes, a, yes. a song of ice and fire for sure, which would lead you to talk about a Danny Targaryens and Jon Snow. That I get, but on the show, this is the Starks are the people we kind of yeah, love first. The, yeah, they're the one, the family that everyone is supposed to be. It doesn't yeah. mean you have to, but it's yeah. the one that they're, you're supposed to. And and the Sansa Jon Snow reunion at the beginning of last season was one of my favorite moments. Here you have a brother and sister, even though they're really not brother and sister, but right. they grew up together. Um, come together, and they had, they acknowledge they have not been the closest right. siblings, mm -hmm. but in this time where they've lost their brother, their mother, their father, that they must come together. And the problem now is if Jon Snow goes off, and she's there to rule Winterfell with Baelish by her side, right. Baelish is keep whispering, whispering, whispering. <laughs> She's going to start getting those seeds planted in her head, and she's going to mm. start doing things that maybe Jon Snow would, ne would never agree to or think was right. And so maybe she has more ambition now. And I then like Arya, that. I think she's going to reunite with someone. I don't know if it's going to be with Sansa at Winterfell or if it, it's going to be with maybe Bran mm -hmm. at uh, mm -hmm. North of the Wall or whatever. Just the pictures, yeah, she's in clothes that seem like she's going somewhere that's much colder. Right. She's still got that list. Um, a couple mm -hmm. minutes here on Bran, and also the brothers, Brotherhood Without Banner, mm -hmm. uh, Banners, excuse me. Um, we got Beric with that flaming sword, one of the great <laughs> shots of the trailer. John, I know you love that. That's we right. have the Hound up there. We have possibly <laughs> Hound, or maybe that's a buffer Braun down yeah. south. Uh, Clegane Bowl <laughs> might not be dead, um, but I am so, I was so excited and curious of how does the Brotherhood factor into this story, Rachel? 
I, it makes sense when you think about it that, you know, and it's why Stannis factored into that story of what's going on up Because north. he did what was right for the realm. Okay, that and. <laughs> <laughs> yes, burning uh, your own daughter, right for the realm. Um, listening to Melisandre, who, mm. say what you will about her, her god is the ancient enemy of the other. Yeah. And the others and the whites and, and they understand that the battle for the Iron Throne is the petty concern compared to the to the Great War. And so the Brotherhood Without Banners being kind of co led by Beric, who's been brought back from the dead however mm -hmm. many times by Thoros, who's a red priest, like they understand the real war. And so yeah. them heading up makes a lot of sense to me. And then as we spoke about last week, the Hound sort of like being a de facto member of that group, yeah. is, it's, a, it's a good fit for his, from his skill point of view. And also hopefully that, you know, an Arya Hound reunion would be something I'd be, I could get behind. I'm, I'm getting more and more behind it there. That shot is a little <laughs> suspicious, but, but uh, Clegangle, Clegangle, <sighs> I always struggle to say it, might not be mm. dead. Dennis, uh, the Brotherhood, R'hllor, Azor Ahai, uh, Flaming Swords, does this, this does seem to factor in quite well. Yeah, yeah, and it, it makes sense, especially with the Hound and, and going with his storyline. Like, if, if they want to further him along, and because he didn't pat, die in that one mm -hmm. uh, season, that, that this redemption story, maybe for him and for, for the Brotherhood Without Banners, might come to ruin. Maybe they die, uh, sacrifice their lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Hound sacrificed his life for Arya. You know, yeah. that, that oh, might happen. Sweet. We I see like her that. bundled up. It's really circle. possible. It's a full circle. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, Bran, quickly talk about Bran and the Night King. Um, they definitely seem to be heading for some kind of showdown. We've got those, uh, got those ravens, kind of <laughs> Bran warging into that. Night King's mm -hmm. like, yeah, see ya. <laughs> uh, I agree with John. I think we, the big battle Night King and his army and, and, and the people of Westeros might happen next season. Yeah. But, Rachel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, where does Bran factor into this, other than possibly telling John his real name and, hey, here's yeah. what's going on? There's the whole download that has to happen with yeah. all the information that Bran has got from the Three-Eyed Raven and his um, visions. I think that what happens beyond the wall in this season is sort of like uh, to get proof, maybe, mm -hmm. to like prove to the rest of the realm, like if they can like capture a white and haul him down to King's Landing and say, hey guys, look, I don't know, something, they're, they're on a mission because it's a smaller group yeah. that are beyond the wall, so I don't know exactly what that mission is. Maybe they're looking for the horn to keep it away from yeah. uh, the, the whites. I'm not sure, but Bran's sort of uh, metaphysical issue or, mm. or or connection to the Night's King is what I find fascinating because we kind of assume, or at least I kind of assume, that John and the Night's King are headed for like a, like yeah. almost like a, like a single combat type yeah. thing. We had but, the come at me bro moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they they're definitely sizing each other up, but Bran's the one who's actually connected to him right. and knows his origin story and like that that was actually a man and the the grabbing of his hand and the flashbacks. So like, there's. There's something there where Bran has to play a part, and yeah. and I love the idea of like an internal mind struggle between the two of them. Like Bran wargs into a raven, and the Night's King sees him, and does yeah. he like push him out of the raven? Like what is what is a a, a fight of the minds look like? Dennis, you talked about last week how the Bran storyline, like a lot of people say, is not the best at times. Yeah. Exposition. Are you excited about this possibility of Bran? I mean, I, if he actually plays a part in in the battle in the Great War. If he held, I, I, I don't think his character, we've invested enough in him to be the sole person to fight the Night King. I just, right. you know, it's like, okay, this guy that we barely saw throughout the seven seasons right. is gonna fight the Night King, who's basically the, 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 the leader of, of, of what's coming. And, but if he helps out Jon Snow, maybe like in some other way, either with information or with warging or something, and while Jon Snow fights him, that I can I can get on board with. But if it's right. just like a showdown between Bran and the Night King, eh, yeah. nah, count me out of that one. Jon, I want some fight nods here. Bran, Night King, who, who, what's the vague thoughts? <laughs> Night King, definitely, if it's Bran versus Night King. But uh, I don't think it's going to be like I think you, I think what you're saying is right. I think Jon Snow is going to uh, come into this thing. Also, the Brotherhood of the Banners was created to protect the small folk, right? Yeah. And Art mm -hmm. Stark did the career them. They, they went out on that mission. It's, it's, that's the heritage, right? If you see an Excalibur, at the end of Excalibur, Lancelot comes back to the Knights of the Round Table. That's how this works. They're all coming back, I think, to find their purpose again on this mission, whatever they're going to do. Maybe they are getting the white, maybe they're getting the horn, whatever it may be. But I think it's going to be something to protect the overall kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And because it doesn't matter who's on the throne, 
if there's not if it's all going to be laid waste by the whites and the and, yeah. and, and, and king. So, so I, I think uh, we're going to see Brand finally do something of active nature in this series. So, to me, I'm excited about that as much as you can when you're warging. Right, I'm right. excited to see that. But I think it, he there's no way he could take him on. Because it seems like the Night King uh, has a very, uh, very rabid army and knows what to do with them. You know, we've seen that. We right. saw that uh, a couple of times. And yes, the come at me moment, you just saw what, what he could lay waste to. So. Mm. And I forgot to mention this, and I've seen this theory, and I don't know exactly how it worked out. But because the Night King grabbed Bran, yeah. a lot of people theorize that that connection will be be part of the reason why the wall comes down and the Night's King can come south. That mm. somehow, because the, the magic of the three-eyed raven's right, tree was broken. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Good, uh, job, the, Good job, Brand. Good job, Brand. I mean, <laughs> and it would kind of <laughs> suck for Brand. Yeah. But like that his mistake not only, you know, cost Hodor and, right. and yeah. Leaf and, and the three-eyed raven their lives, but that he, he is somehow... He's doing summer. so good. He's doing so good. Um, yeah, but the, he could be part of the reason why. Yeah. I mean, we don't know exactly how the wall is coming down. It's got right. to, and, yeah. the, and, and the Night's King's got to travel south, so there could be yeah. a connection there. It could be. John, you talked about the Iron Throne. Uh, last big prediction section here, then we'll get some general thoughts. Um, Cersei, yeah. Jamie, the Iron Throne. Cersei is in power now. Let's cut to the chase and get right to the prediction. Cersei Lannister, alive or dead at the end of season seven? Dead. Ooh. I think dead. I really do. I think she has to, in the long run, karmically pay for what she did. And there's a lot that she did that was really bad to a lot of people. Mm. And yes, she had some bad stuff done to her too, but I think she will. And I think it will be Jamie. Yeah. Uh, because like people yeah. have said, yeah. Jamie has, like you said, Rachel, uh, Jamie has not seen what happened to her. And he will come back and not recognize the woman he loves anymore. That heart is black, dark now, and it is cold. And even he won't be able to put his uh, penetrate that heart with his love. I think in that moment, and he'll see that he has a moment where she's going to do something even more horrible, right. and it will be his nobility, which we've come to love about him because mm -hmm. of his relationship with Brienne, that will come to the forefront in that yeah. moment. And he, we, we know he's going to be uh, having some action on some fields of fire, yes. Rachel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which uh, ties in some ancient uh, lore there. Uh, all right, Cersei. Dead, alive, and who done it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's hard not to completely agree with John. It's it's poetic. Jamie killed Ares before Ares could, you know, basically murder every mm -hmm. citizen yes. of King's Landing. And uh, Cersei has proven at the end of last season that she's willing to murder a lot of them using wildfire, mm -hmm. burn them all. So I think he's going to see the monster that she's become and have to. Uh, have history repeat itself, even though it would be far harder for him to do it this time. And I just don't see her, and even Jamie, to be honest, as part of the Great War. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, what yeah. part, does, like, there's no convincing her that there's something more important than her personal vengeance and right. having, holding on to her own power in the Iron Throne. Nobody's going to convince her there's something that she needs to band together with her enemies against. Right. I just don't see it happening. So I feel like she has to go at the end of this season and then a handful of others. I mean, yeah. I don't know where Jamie fits in with that uh, either. I, but I, I think that's a great point, what you're saying. <laughs> I think so, her and Euron maybe team up, get some victories going. Yay, yeah. we're great. But they're wiped out because it doesn't matter. Right, yeah. exactly. Can, I, yeah. can yeah. I add something to this? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I also yeah. think, which is interesting, if you because you guys are book readers, it's I think if I'm right, it says in the books that Jamie thinks he cannot die until she dies. And so he has a belief. He that. believes yeah. that he's uh, invincible until she dies. So this is what may come to put like he kills her but then he is quickly killed in some other way by someone who is a Cersei uh, that she has tricked right. or manipulated to be a, a follower of her so that's certainly possible so, now, to go along with that yes yeah. I think she's going to be dead by the end of the season I think her story arc will end because that's where her character like there's no reason for her character to exist after the season if the Great War is what, what next season is yeah, and right. I also agree that I think Jamie's going to do it He in one of those pictures he has a widow's whale uh, yeah. in him yeah. too and w mm. with, along with what you're saying with the theory I think he kills himself I think he kills her certainly uh, and then because of his love for her he kills can't himself take it. like he kills her, kills her because of honor and he, he thinks that's what's the best for the realm mm. then he kills himself or He's like, he'll, he'll have lost purpose. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if there's, mm -hmm. and there's the only person that can maybe even remotely convince him that there is purpose beyond that would be Brienne, but I don't know that but they, they could come back together. she's going to be in love with Tormund together. and never yeah. going to come back. <laughs> and, and that's certainly possible, a samurai ending where he has Brienne yeah. kill him. He has or Brienne maybe. 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 Do your duty. Yeah. 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 Do, yeah. do your duty. Yep. Um, wow, yeah, that's some heavy <laughs> stuff there. Anyone think Tyrion could be the one to do it? No. 
No. Uh, There's just not the same... Like, Tyrion killing Tywin had a resonance, yeah. mm -hmm. and I don't think the resonance would be the same if he was the one to kill Cersei as mm -hmm. it would be for Jaime. I mean, not that Cersei did everything in her power right. to kill him during the trial and, yeah. and, and all of that stuff, but I, I think that that bittersweetness that Martin was talking right. about and everything, it, it's more apparent in a Jaime killing Cersei. And also, yeah. despite all that Cersei has done to Tyrion, mm -hmm. I think he, he... It's not like he's, like... Thinks she's the best person in the world, but she hates him more than he hates Correct. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, him killing her, I just don't see any emotional satisfaction. At least for us, for viewers, I think I think it's I think it's Jamie. It, yeah, sometimes I think the answer is the answer. Sometimes mm -hmm. we want to get creative. <laughs> Occasionally, even in Game of Thrones yeah. land, it is that. So that's some of the big stuff, the big storms. We could break down this for hours and hours and hours, and, and there'll probably be another trailer. Uh, even well, well, no, we're a week out. I don't think. I think we're here, right? Yeah. We're here. I think so. Take it back. I'm an idiot. Um, but we're going to rewatch the trailers over and over that we've already seen, and I like that. There's there's great trailers, by the way, this year. But uh, I still have a lot of questions. I don't mm -hmm. have like, oh, that's going to be that. That's going to be mm -hmm. that. And that's what's been fun about this going in. Uh, 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 Rachel, how do you feel going in? The, the, I mean, they, there was some trolling going on in those trailers. I mean, the whole Clegane Bowl thing was like, yeah. people are tearing that shot apart going, is it the Hound? But he was in the winter. So, yeah. like, can, can he take the magic carpet and get down to the south really the fast? Baelish so, the Baelish train? Exactly. Like, exactly. There's a transporter somewhere, we know, because yeah. Baelish gets around quick. Yeah. So... I love that there was a lot of ambiguity in the trailers that yeah. has us salivating, like freeze framing, and, and well, maybe that's me. But um, <laughs> no, in, no. <laughs> in terms of other things that I'm I'm excited for, um, we talked about the the female coalition with Danny. I'm like, I, I want to know what Theon's mm -hmm. role in all of that is, and, and he's he's very staunchly behind his sister. But there's a shot in the trailer of we think it's him yeah. on the on the shore falling to his knees and. Maybe that's Dragonstone. Maybe that's the Iron Islands. You know, I, I want to sort of I'm interested in tracking his story. Um, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of Sam in any of the trailers, right. so I'm sure we'll be checking in with him yeah. too. We had that one promo shot of him and Gilly yeah. going, and she's looking at uh, you know a, 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 a ice and fire wiki of uh, Azor <laughs> Ahai, uh, talking about Azor High and that prophecy and how that that is. So uh, as we get to our final segment here, this is called a dream of spring, uh, winter is here we are now looking forward to spring season eight so predictions overall and maybe some specifics on where we're going to be at the end of season seven john roca the master of revenge and vengeance yeah. on this panel where do you think we're going to be like overall yeah well yeah, okay uh, when well, the season seven episodes when this ends and we're I, all gathered okay. around watching holding hands i see possibly crying yes possibly where do you see it? <laughs> i see danny on the throne Okay. Uh, I see John out there to battle the Whites uh, and the Night King with Bronn. Uh, I think the House Tarly, which no one is mentioning, is mm -hmm. going to have some kind of uh, uh, significant factor in this season. Okay. This guy is supposed to be this amazing warrior, amazing mm -hmm. fighter like we saw with the Blackfish. So that's certainly possible. But I think the number one thing is Tyrion is going to find his way through this whole uh, season to be standing uh, next to Danny. I think he will actually survive the season as the Hand of the Queen and will be standing there and then will help her rule because of how he has learned to rule himself and, and, how, and watching her and knows her now. Knows her as a ruler now, trusts her now, and I think that's certainly uh, what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I feel. And, and, and Yara will be, will be in charge of the Iron Islands. And then, because like, I think you have to mobilize everyone and get everything yeah. settled in if you're going to have the Great War. You can't have the yeah. Great War and still have factions fighting amongst each other, because then there's no way that you can believe they will be able to hand, uh, withstand the hordes yeah. of whites in the Night I King. Think, I, I agree with you a lot there, and this is about coming together. Yeah. There's a little bit of happy Ewoks dancing in your ending, and I like that. <laughs> well, you got everyone's got a job, and they're ready to fight. I like it. I like it. Dennis, springs eternal. Dennis, where do you see us at the end of this season? Uh, I mean, very similar to what Roka is saying. Danny on the throne, Tyrion by uh, her side, Cersei dead, possibly Jaime Lannister dead. What I foresee that beyond that into a, a season eight will it be, I have a feeling, yes, the Great War will be a, a big part. I think they're going to end the Great War maybe midway through the season and we start Ooh. to maybe see, because even with most of the seasons, except for our last season, you see where that the, the big Climactic battles happen usually in episode nine, and then right. you have another episode of, of what the fallout of stuff. And I think maybe the, the series may end that way, where you have the Great War, 
an episode ending in episode four of six, and you mm -hmm. get maybe two episodes of, well, what, what's next? Yeah. And, and you get to see characters and where they go from there. Mm. I can agree with that. Rachel, at the end of this season, where are we at? Does the wall come down? What do we got? Danny on the throne? Happy Ewoks dancing in the Roka version. I don't think it's going to be happy Ewoks. I think it's going to be messier than that. I feel yeah. like well, Danny's Ewoks are pretty be... messy. Different <laughs> show, but they eat stormtroopers. True do. enough. But I just I feel like Danny will come out victorious, but not in a cut and dry way. I feel like there's going to be news from the north or proof from the north or something that gets in the way of all the fighting over the Iron Throne. So I don't see it clear cut of her defeating Cersei and then sitting on the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. I hear, I see it more of like, you know, win a few battles, lose a few, lose a few battles, get this information, meet with Jaw and go, oh, maybe there is something bigger going on and more important. And using that knowledge to sort of finish ending the war. Mm -hmm. Basically start waving your hands and go, everybody, let's look this way. You right. know, the, the Lannisters certainly aren't, but everybody else will. So I don't see any really ruling happening, like mm -hmm. Danny sitting there with Tyrion next to her and, and like ruling afterwards. I think it's an, an immediate mm -hmm. shift of focus to the important mm -hmm. thing that's going off. And like it that. does feel like, I mean, uh, what, the, can you envision a better ending shot than the wall crumbling down and the Night's King standing there at the end of season seven? Right. I mean, it sounds about right to me. Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right, guys, that is it for now. But as we start to uh, clock out and say goodbye, I want to give you guys a chance in case we forgot anything, anything you want to add. Rachel, starting with you, thank you so much for uh, joining okay. us this year and these two episodes. going to be a lot of fun talking Game of Thrones with you here on Collider. Uh, any final thoughts as we say goodbye? I just think that, like David and Dan have promised us, that the, this is going to be fast-paced. I think there's going to be a lot of action, but you know that they're really good at getting the character stuff in there. I think the meetings of people, people coming together, and the momentum is going to be amazing. I'm really excited about that, and I'm excited to talk about each episode with you guys after it airs. Absolutely. The Roca says, John Roca, what yeah. do you got? Leanna Morwan, have we mentioned her yet? We haven't. Here's your form. <laughs> 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 That's the one you got to watch out for. You don't introduce a character like that in the previous season and not give her nothing to do in this season. I th and we haven't seen her in the trailers, I don't think. I don't no, think we've seen her in the trailers. Really not, yeah. and that's perfect Game of Thrones, because you come <laughs> out of nowhere and shock you and do what it does. So to me, that's the money in the bank moment for me. And so I, I love her to pieces, and I want her to have a, a more powerful uh, and surprising uh, uh, role in this season. So that's that's basically my, my thoughts. I could be uh, I could be on board with that. She is a great character, stole a lot of stuff. John, as always, thanks to have uh, Thank you, you. great insight. I look forward and, to this um, season. Yeah, you are the master of revenge and vengeance. <laughs> you determine how bad these bad guys are getting. Yeah. You are the outlaw. Dennis, one of the building blocks here at Collider. You are a building block of this show. Appreciate it. Ooh, any final thoughts as we say goodbye? Just super excited to talk Game of Thrones with you guys. Once they start airing, it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. And yeah. then it's going to go away, and then we're going to be all sad, right? Yes. It's yeah. gonna, it's gonna, the, the seven weeks are just going to come and go like that, and then we're going to be crying about how we're not going to see a new episode for possibly a year, a year and a half, two years. Breaking Who knows? Heart. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's when, you know, we all have to get together in some sort of uh, Game of Thrones anonymous yeah. uh, group together <laughs> and, and just talk about Game of Thrones and watch Game of Thrones all the time. That would be great. Well, that is it for now, guys. I'm Ken Napsack. You can follow me online at that name. And I talk Game of Thrones pretty much every day there, so follow me for those adventures. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be broadcasting Sunday night. Stay tuned to Collider, Movie Talk, all the stuff. We'll tell you the exact time. We're going to be broadcasting after the episode premieres on the East Coast in the United States of America in general there. And then we'll be uh, Mondays until the finale uh, because we want to really take some time to break down what's going on. As Dennis said, it's a lot going to be going on this season. And then finale, we'll have a big experience watching that together and talking about it with you guys. So that is it for now. For Cody Hall, who made us look pretty today with uh, all the pictures and, and switching, and the rest of you guys, thanks for this uh, journey about to begin here. Collider Thrones Talk. We're going to have a lot of fun this season. We will see you next Sunday. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.